Welcome. This is David Panush of the Edmund Burke School, and this is a brief video lecture about uh, Stumbling on Happiness by Daniel Gilbert. We're going to be looking at Chapter 8, which is in the section on rationalization. The title of the chapter is Paradise Glossed. Uh, the most important topic introduced in this chapter is the idea of the psychological immune system. So the psychological immune system is the same idea as a physical immune system, except it's what works to keep us mentally healthy and happy and motivated and keep us from being sad and unmotivated um, and depressed and otherwise psychologically impaired or psychologically sick. Um, so the way it does this generally is that it takes ambiguity um, and interprets it in the most positive and mentally healthy way possible. Sometimes we think of this as a bad thing because we call it a rationalization, but really it keeps us feeling good and being effective people um, uh, in our lives. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. So the big, uh, Gilbert starts off the chapter talking about negative events and how generally speaking they don't affect us for as long or as deeply as most people would predict. Um, so it's not that negative events aren't terrible when they happen to you or to someone you love. They are. Um, but generally when you ask people how long will you be affected or how deeply will you be affected, most people would over predict both the impact and the duration of the negative events. And in fact, when you go back and ask folks later, you know, would you do it over again and avoid this negative event? Um, people say quite often, no, uh, I wouldn't want to avoid it. Now it's a part of me and a part of who I am. And the reason why both of these things happen, one of the reasons at least, um, is because of our psychological immune system, another typo. Um, sorry, so ignore that. P-I-S, not P-S-I. Um, I got deflate gate on the brain in a few years, few years, most of you won't even remember what deflate gate was. Um, so uh, when, when the psychological immune system kicks in, uh, it makes us feel better about things that are happening to us. So um, we don't feel as bad about it and it happens quite quickly. And then we also tend to rewrite our memories, um, which we've talked about earlier in the book, to make that past event now important to us and we grow from it and we learn from it. That's putting the best possible face on it, which makes it a part of us and then we don't regret it and we don't want it to go away. So how do we do this? How does the psychological immune system work its magic? Um, Gilbert goes into a discussion in the book about how meanings matter. Our brains are machines for making meaning. So we don't actually you know, experience reality unmediated, that is without any filters whatsoever. We experience reality through our eyes and our ears and our senses, and we know that that's not always reality. We know we have to interpret it. That's what our brain is doing. Our brain is taking in the light and interpreting it and making something out of it. So what we exist, go, our idea of existence on an everyday basis is a mental representation of reality. Therefore, there are lots of ways in which we have to figure out what it means to us. So the example, one of the examples he gives in the book, and I'm not giving a lot of examples or experiments in this video lecture because this is really just conceptual. Um, so you should go and look for the specifics, but he talks about zero versus the letter O, and depending on the way you're reading it and what's around them, the same exact shape could be either one. And he talks about context, frequency, recency, and preference as ways that we take in stimuli and decide what they mean. Context is what's around it, right? So if we see ones and twos and threes, we think that contextually it's probably a zero. If we see A's and B's and C's, we think contextually it's probably a letter, an O. Frequency is how frequently do we encounter it as a zero, or how frequently do we encounter it as an O. If we're a mathematician, we are encountering zeros all the time, and maybe we're just more likely to jump to the conclusion that it's a zero. Um, most of the rest of us probably deal with letters more often and would just assume it's an O to start with. Recency is, well, maybe I was just in math class. So even if I'm not a mathematician, I just left math class, so I'm more likely to interpret it as a zero. Preference is where the psychological immune system comes in because to some degree, 
we get a chance through the way we perceive things to actually impose our own preferences on what we see. Um, if you think about two people watching a sporting match or a game or something and they see uh, something happen and the referee either calls or doesn't call a penalty or a foul, well, who do you root for? And that's going to really interpret. You've saw, seen the same exact thing, but one of you might interpret it one way if you're rooting for one team or interpret it another way if you're rooting for the other team. And in terms of the psychological immune system, we're always rooting for us. So all of our preferences towards ourselves come into how we um, interpret ambiguous stimuli. And here's the wonderful thing. The entire human experience is ambiguous. Um, everything you experience on a daily basis, not just the stimuli we take in, but like, you know, the experiences you have, you go on a date, you take a test, you um, argue with a friend, those are all experiences that can be interpreted in lots of different ways. How do you make meaning of it? You make meaning of it using the way you want to make meaning of it to some degree. So here's the thing. So the psychological immune system gets to work. It works on our experiences as soon as we have them. And once they're ours, it tends to put a positive spin on them because anything that's ours is good. That's called positive mental health. Um, if we're constantly seeing things that are associated with ourselves as bad or negative or awful, then we're not as mentally healthy as we probably should be. Um, so anything that we experience, we tend to associate with us and we tend to start working on making it more positive. So that's one thing the psychological immune system does. It does it all the time and it does it subconsciously. We're not aware that it's doing it, but it has to do this by balancing illusion and reality. So we can't, you know, there's only so many ways we can interpret the facts um, when reality really starts intruding on us to make something positive into a negative. And that's why when something bad happens to us right away, there's nothing the psychological immune system can do. But when the pain starts to go down a little bit, when we've had a little time, when our friends have had a chance to talk to us and we've gotten some perspective, then we can sort of go back and start to put a different spin on things. Um, but if we're walking around all day seeing everything through rose-colored glasses and our um, psychological immune system may be working in overdrive, that's when we might run into problems because uh, we're too much in la-la positive land and, uh, you know, and reality can smack us upside the head. On the other hand, if you're not mostly interpreting most of your experiences as positive and you're, and you're never able to put a positive spin on things, then you've got, um, you know, you're not as mentally healthy in a different way. So that's, in order for the psychological immune system to work, it does have to work on rationalization and interpretation of ambiguous stimuli, but it can only push and pull on those stimuli. It can't rewrite them completely. And if it does, you know, th then, we're, then we're delusional or, or in denial. Um, so there's a whole bunch of uh, ways in which the psychological immune system can cook the facts. Um, we talked a little bit about this in the first course, if you were in the first course, in terms of winning arguments. Um, the general idea is we find and interpret information that serve our view of reality and we ignore or minimize or downplay information or facts that don't help us see the world in a positive way for ourselves. Um, and so the details of that are, are outlined a little bit more in the book and you should review them, but generally that's the way it works. We cook the facts a little bit enough to make us feel better and we ignore the ones that are a little bit negative, if we can, up to a point, um, again, to make us feel better. So. That's the psychological immune system in a nutshell, and uh, that is why negative experiences don't affect us as deeply or for as long as we expect them to, because it works, and because it works without us knowing that it works. If we were too aware of it, it couldn't do its job.